And we started seeing a big wave of these envelopes by the dozens showing up in people's um, mailboxes. This is 22 pieces of mail that I have received in the last week and a half. Within the first hour of setting up on surveillance on that ATM, they saw a suspect arrive in a vehicle. He walks over to the ATM, he's acting suspiciously, and they would see him pull out a card, put it in the ATM, and then he would take the cash. Another card, cash, another card, cash. He did this five times and then decided to leave. The amount of fraud that we found was astronomical. First it was state prison inmates, then it was jail inmates, and increasingly over time we're learning here in El Dorado County, uh, uh, literally half of the inmates in the jail were collecting unemployment benefits. Every time I tried to reapply, it said, you can't, you can't. So now I get into the phone calls, which never work. We are currently receiving more calls than we can answer and are unable to assist you at this time. Please try again later. There is no sugarcoating the reality. California did not have sufficient security measures in place to prevent this level of fraud. Would you have any idea how much money taxpayers have lost due to some of these fraudulent claims? No, that's not something that we track. I think the, the UI fraud, not only in California, but across the country, is the most significant fraud occurrence that has happened for, for the United States. I mean, you know, it was not unnormal to get a $3,000 sale every two hours. Dozens of arrests for identity theft and fraud, not here in Sacramento, but in Beverly Hills. It's crazy that these jewelry stores in Rodeo Drive are having people walk in with staggering amounts of cash and EDD cards to buy things. Because the way the legislature changed things, you can't seize that money. What is your updated estimate of uh, the fraud that was perpetrated throughout the pandemic? Of the $177 billion that was paid out, $20 billion is estimated to be fraudulent. This picture is from 2004. Um, I was at Rockland Junior Thunder, and we won the championship that year for the for the youth football in this area. And then I've got a few Whitney ones from my 13 years coaching at Whitney. I had a diabetic ulcer on my foot that I let go too long. Um, I've had both my knees replaced, so that knee on that on the left leg became infected due to the infection in the foot. And so I stayed nearly a month in the hospital, and then I transferred to a nursing care facility for almost a month in itself just to heal. Yeah, it was hard because I missed the last three games. And then, of course, our varsity team had a great run, beating Folsom and going through the playoffs. So it's tough going on disability, but you probably figured, okay, that's what it's here for, right? I ended up receiving four checks and then everything was just cut off. Well, we actually start getting multiple calls and reports of people saying, hey, I got EDD uh, mail showing up into my address. Mailboxes across the Sacramento area have been stuffed with letters from the EDD. They just stopped everything, and it's been since November. I just think it was a new way. It is deja vu, absolutely. They said it's because some fraud went on. The thievery will never go away. They're just going to try to change it up. $11.4 billion in fraud. I did I was pretty sure that the fraud was at least a billion dollars. This is a gargantuan problem. This is white collar crime. It's easy money. I received a uh, official notice from the disability um, department saying that they needed some information because my disability insurance claim is being looked at. And I sat there and I thought, no, I didn't file a disability claim. I'm still employed. It appears that I've applied for disability insurance but I list myself as the employer. It has a date that I supposedly worked. The last day worked was 
October 19th or something, which is a Saturday. And I work for a credit union and we basically don't work on the weekends unless there's, you know, special circumstances. And we're now learning about a new type of fraud involving California's Employment Development Department. It's hitting everyone from legitimate claimants to doctors. Envelopes from the EDD are targeting disability benefits. Same tactics, new problem. Yeah, why, why would EDD contact me? These letters mailed to Pete Cameron regarding disability insurance. I've gotten the first letter and then turn around three days later and got a letter that's exactly the same and the only difference is in the case numbers. One of the things I've heard recently, in fact somebody sent me a copy of a letter that this person received uh, that somebody had opened an account for EDD in their name and she's like, she, she doesn't need EDD, she did not apply for it. I got contacted by people I know saying, hey, I got, you know, I got these in my mailbox and we never applied for this so then I reached out to EDD and they had they had done their own as well like their own press release and so I just think it was a new way it's I mean the, the thievery will never go away they're just going to try to change it up. Now one assembly member says doctors identities are being stolen as well he says they're being used to verify accounts so disability payments can be sent to scam artists. I am not convinced that the EDD can really make the distinction uh, between those who are trying to scan the system and legitimate individuals with disabilities who need their payments. Thank you for calling the Employment Development Department Disability Insurance Program. A lot of people, especially physicians, a lot of doctors that, that had it and folks were applying with that. And like I said, it comes back to, this is white collar crime. It's much safer than dealing drugs, robbing a bank, are breaking in someone's house because the penalties are less severe. We've been closely monitoring our systems, obviously, and noted this kind of activity hitting our kind of fraud indicators. So we were able to take action pretty quickly to minimize some of the impacts. For disability insurance benefits... We were hit with a, with a wave of uh, people calling our office. Please wait while your call is transferred. To the these were uh, mothers with children. Uh, these were people who were getting disability. These were legitimate claims and they were just cut off and they were in desperate circumstance. Finally about the 14th I decided I needed to call in and find out why I haven't got another check. We're sorry, the maximum number of callers waiting to speak to a representative has been reached. I got lucky and it only took me like four or five attempts and I got through and uh, the gal told me what's going on and you know, we quit sending checks because of fraud. Yeah, and you'd think even when they started freezing checks that they would have just put it online, you know, some kind of note, some kind of blast to you that, you know, nothing. It is deja vu, absolutely. It shouldn't happen that way. Um, they had the experience to get it right the first time, and they should have seen this coming. And it's time and time again, they're gonna infiltrate the, the weakest point. And with the way EDE is set up, it is the weakest point in the state government. Lines of people outside the offices of California's Employment Development Department. But this wasn't for unemployment. These people were trying to get their disability payments. How many people were there by the time you left? Um, probably 30, 40. They said it's because some fraud went on. But like I was telling them, I get that there's been fraud, but before that, all of my benefit was there. Did they just cut off your payments? Yep, they just stopped everything, and it's been since November. And that's first thing in the morning, all of them in the same state that you're in on disability, right? Yeah, and some people worse. One gentleman I was talking to, he was the number one in line. It was his 15th time down there since he was able to physically go down there uh, because he had a spinal cord injury who hasn't been receiving anything since August. My payments stopped. I'm on disability. I had surgery in September. Um, I was put on automatic payments. My return to work date was January 12th. My payments stopped on December 9th. No reason, no nothing. The claims are apparently caught up in yet another wave of EDD fraud. This time it's affecting disability claims. By January, the EDD had suspended 345,000 accounts. In an email to KCRA3 Investigates, the department says that there were 27,000 doctor's credentials they needed to verify 
before unfreezing claims. I work for a healthcare company. We do um, investigate fraud with providers. And if we said, well, we've got all this fraud going on, we're just going to cancel everybody's insurance. Oh, they're you know, it would be all over the place. And while there are multiple offices that deal with unemployment, the only ones in our area that deal with disability claims are in Sacramento and Stockton. Well, it is difficult. You know, it's, it's, there's a sense of pride there. And, you know, you kind of got, you have to put your pride aside. And, and uh, luckily, you know, like I said, through the GoFundMe account, a lot of people helped us out. And we count our blessings every day that, that uh, we have the support from the church and through friends and family that, that uh, I know some people probably don't have. And it's heartbreaking when you heard, you know, a mom with a newborn or somebody uh, who's on disability, uh, who can't, maybe isn't mobile, maybe has been hurt, uh, and they're having a real tough time because they've been cut off. And now their rent's due, they're, you know, they gotta pay for their food, uh, they gotta live a life, and they're nearly destitute as a, a result of it. Check stubs. These are the four check stubs. Somebody from your company, Channel 3, um, reached out to Jim Cooper's office, the assemblyman, and his uh, staff was able to help and move the process along. When we call it, we intervene. The ball gets rolling much sooner. Things happen, folks get paid. It shouldn't be that way. If a citizen calls, it should get rectified in seven to 10 days. It shouldn't take the intervention of a legislator. And so we basically stepped in and insisted that if you can't do this for our people, we will. And that's exactly what we did. They wouldn't accept our help at first, but we made a nuisance of ourselves and they finally relented and we were able to clear these in weeks rather than months and months. I kept an eye on the internet every day looking at whether they cut a check or not. And Finally, to our surprise, they had actually cut a check on March 2nd. And you would have thought having that, the, the UI debacle, they would have got the training in their uh, sea legs with that, when in fact they didn't. On the way over here, I talked to our majority leader, and she had some concerns about it because she's hearing from her constituents the same thing, that are applying for DI, they're being stuck in the portal, they're having a hard time getting through, through EDD and a lot of issues. So. You know, at some point, we can't let this repeat. This is the same thing, just disability insurance. So those same um, stop gaps should have been in place and really weren't. So it's just, it's just, and it's frustrating. This is KCLA 3. We begin with breaking news. And that breaking news coming out of the California's Embattled Employment Development Department, the EDD, where the agency's newest director is stepping down. You should have managers in place that figure that out right away. Hey, we've got to change our operation. So EDD Director Rita Sines was hired just a little more than a year ago. She was hired to clean up the agency, and tonight she's out. I don't know whether they brought some calm and some professionalism back to it. I hope they did but I don't have a lot of confidence, time will tell. For the record, I'm Rita Science, Director of the Department of the Employment Development Department. We begin with breaking news. And that breaking news coming out of the California's Embattled Employment Development Department, the EDD, where the agency's newest director is stepping down. Uh, I came to uh, be with the department in January, and I really appreciate the frustrations that people have had. Brian, this was a surprise. That department needs stability. Yeah, it really does, Edie. So EDD Director Rita Sines was hired just a little more than a year ago. She was hired to clean up the agency, and tonight she's out. This just simply says to me that it's chaotic, that just changing the person at the top 
doesn't necessarily change all of the inner workings, the guts of the bureaucracy. The governor has already announced her replacement, Nancy Farias, who is currently a chief deputy director within EDD. I have great respect for Nancy Farias, who's the, now the deputy or the director. I think she's in it for the right reasons and she really wants to dig in and continue fixing the system. Good afternoon, everyone. We are going to start Budget Subcommittee uh, 4 in room 444. Our first item uh, will provide an update on EDD as well as an overview of the various budget change proposals to improve operations and address fraud at the department. We talked to the district attorney. She's a little more hopeful. <laughs> She's optimistic her glass is half full. Our panelists for this item include our new director of EDD, Ms. Nancy Farias. She said she's had interactions with the new director that she feels like at least they're, they're listening. Is that something that you guys are finding in the legislature? Yeah, I mean, uh, she's a good person, but look what happened over the years. Is it her fault? She's brand new. No, it's not her fault, but you have that legacy of prior directors and folks that were there and that are still there that didn't do their job. So, yeah, to be hopeful, things are going to change, but it still takes time. And it has to come from the top down. The fraud prevention contracts in the governor's budget assist us in paying claimants timely while continuing to prevent scammers from infiltrating our systems on the front end. You need um, some changes throughout the EDD, not just at the top level. Because at the end of the day, those folks in the trenches get it done. And you've got to make sure they're doing their job and being held accountable. And, and the wait times were ridiculous. And the people being hung up on, that makes no sense. That's, that's just basic customer service. My hope is that they will have learned their lesson and they will heed uh, what the auditor has made so clear uh, over and over again. I hope that they learn the lesson that their bureaucracy is there to serve people and not to protect themselves. We issued that report, those two reports, in January of 2021 and we do follow up with EDD, they have to report to us. They've made some progress, not as much progress as we would hope they would have made. Many of the reforms and budget requests that are before you today come from the well thought out recommendations of the California State Auditor as well as the EDD strike team. We have met every deadline set by the auditor and 17 of the 21 recommendations are complete, about 81%. The remaining recommendations are well underway. So for example, the fraud unit, they did identify and, and uh, trying to centralize some of those fraud mitigation efforts. So they've created that unit, but they haven't fully staffed it yet. If I could ask uh, real quickly, what's the status of EDD's fraud unit that was to be fully staffed as of November 2021? Do we have any update on that? I, I believe it's fully staffed, actually. Um, maybe one of my colleagues can... That's correct. Um, hi, Amy Faulkner, Employment Development Department, Acting Chief Deputy over our operations. Um, the fraud unit that was recommended by the California State Auditor and our Unemployment Insurance Program is now fully staffed and operational. And could I ask, what does fully staffed mean? How many do we have? I can actually answer that, Amy, thank you. Uh, hi, Gracia Staten, um, EDD, Deputy Director of the Unemployment Insurance Branch. Um, we actually staffed up a complete section within the Unemployment Insurance Program that includes um, a section manager, two uh, managers, two specific units, and then four to six staff within um, those specific units. So the fraud section in and of itself encompasses approximately 12 individuals. We have like a dozen peace officers to cover the whole state of California, 40 million people. So really the folks that have done the most in this um, EDD fraud have been local law enforcement. Your deputy sheriffs and police officers have done most of the investigations, most of the search warrants. They got a tough job. 12, 12 people? Okay. Um, I just wondered, uh, gosh, that, that opens a Pandora's box for a bunch of questions that this is not the place for me to ask them. But uh, thank you for at least answering that. Brand new Mercedes Benz, laptop computers, expensive shoes. Criminals bought all of those items using money they got from fraudulent claims approved by California's Employment Development Department. Our KCRA 3 documentary called Easy Money, Fraud, Fortune and Failures found a state law changed several years ago made it harder for prosecutors to take and sell those items in order to get the money back. A question from Ms. Farias. Um, 
How many investigations has EDD opened related to fraudulent claims? EDD currently has almost 850 investigations. This is just EDD. Prosecutors say Eric Jacklich filed at least 78 fraudulent claims with EDD looking for pandemic assistance. A woman is facing 166 charges related to a fraud scheme that cost taxpayers about $3 million. A well, former wide receiver for the New England Patriots has been ordered to pay back more than $100,000 of CARES Act money that he got from California's EDD. Ken Brell Tompkins was indicted a year ago for use of unauthorized devices as well as aggravated ID theft. In addition to those charges related to the downtown shooting, today additional charges were filed against Matula Payton in a separate docket alleging three counts of EDD fraud totaling the amount of approximately $45,000 occurring between July of 2020 while he was incarcerated in state prison in August of 2020 as well. And do you know how many have been prosecuted? Um, there's been over 200 arrests. I don't know how many have been prosecuted. Oh, um, looks like about 20 or so. To get things done, it takes, like I said, an act of Congress to change things. So it's, it's, it's a constant battle every day with that. And, and it shouldn't be that way, 100%. There's no reason for it to be that way. There's no reason to hide it. Go out be truthful and tell the public what we're doing and how we plan on fixing this and making sure it never happens again. So when an arrest is made and investigators discover a bank account with potentially fraudulent funds, what happens to those funds? So that we are working on that currently. Uh, you know, I mean, there is, um, we are talking about restitution to EDD, which usually doesn't occur until after the person serves their time in prison. Um, but we are, we do have a working group where we're working with um, McGregor Scott on uh, figuring out how to collect that, those funds. California's asset forfeiture law is very narrow and it's really directed only at drug dealers at this point in time. But if the cash that's discovered, if the car is being driven, if that connection can be made and it can be established in a court of law that it is that they are fruits of the crime, they're evidence of the crime. So there was one person in particular who was showing all kinds of video and pictures of him having stacks of cash on the dash of his car and then bragging about how he's furnishing his house with a brand new refrigerator and buying his mom a Mercedes. And you know, we've been coordinating with the DAs to the best of our ability to convey the message that, you know, seize that stuff, prove it in a court, and as and when you get the conviction and there's a sentence, have the judge order it as restitution to go back to EDD as the victim of the crime. We might get a judge to order two million in restitution that was stolen, but the, the ability to recover that is, is minuscule, as opposed to if you're able to seize the assets that they used the money for, the cars, the trucks, whatever, the homes, then that money could then be used to pay off that restitution. Have any funds been recovered to date? I, yes, I believe there has been um, some collected to date, um, uh, ordered by the court. I'm not sure if collected yet, ordered by the court. Restitution, which again, usually occurs, as you know, after um, a prison sentence. Okay. So we may not see that for a while. Somebody asked me, how much are we gonna recover? Pennies on the dollar is my guess, but the money still has to be paid back, as far as I understand, to the federal government. Somebody's gonna bear that cost. In a Facebook Live segment with Easy Money producer Dave Manicherry, Elk Grove Assembly member Jim Cooper says, in the wake of our documentary, he is going to do something to fix that. We've had discussions at length about this issue, and also because of your story, um, I'm introducing a bill on January 3rd that will allow law enforcement to seize these assets from these individuals. Uh, someone that was involved in asset forfeiture during my time with the Sheriff's Department, um, it does work. In this case, it was narrowly defined, narrowly crafted to deal with folks during the pandemic and to go after those folks. I mean, some folks got several hundred thousand dollars in, in goods and purchases, individuals bought cars. So what we wanna do is bring that money back to the public and put it back in the state coffers where it belongs. The money is stolen. And there actually is a, a bill this year, AB 1637, the Taxpayer Recovery Act, which will allow for some of those funds to be recovered um, through asset forfeiture. Why do you not think it's gonna, gonna pass? I've been here eight years and any bill that's holds 
people accountable, especially in the criminal justice system, is, is not going to get out. Welcome to Public Safety Committee. Do you think I'll make it out of public safety or won't even get out of there? We have the following items, six items, that are on consent. Um, item number two, AB 1637 Cooper, criminal profiteering, asset forfeiture, unemployment and disability insurance fraud. Yeah, it doesn't get out. Those of us who've been elected to represent the constituents that are supposed to be served by the EDD, we have forced them to try at, at least to do a better job. And maybe we're coming out of the dark ages of the EDD and maybe into the middle ages of the, of the EDD. I don't know. Madam Secretary, call the roll. On the consent calendar, Joan Sawyer. Aye. Joan Sawyer, aye. Lackey. Aye. Lackey, aye. Bonta. The fact that we made a, a nuisance of ourselves on behalf of our constituents brought them to their senses, shot a little fear into them, and maybe it caused them to move. I sure hope so, for the sake of our people. Bonta, aye. Brian. Quirk? Aye. Quirk, aye. Take us out by your dinner, steak dinner at Morton's, both you guys. <laughs> All right, good. Say Say Arto, aye. This consent calendar is adopted. First up on the agenda is item number one, AB 2287, Bower K. And we're going to go after the criminals who stole billions of relief money meant for small business and millions of Americans. Tonight I'm announcing that the Justice Department will soon name a chief prosecutor for pandemic fraud. Look, 